uh, they did a whole baby loss storyline. And I lost my son 14 years ago in the same way, pretty much the same way that we decided to. So they came to me and said, Kim, we've, we want to do a baby loss storyline. Uh, and we want you to play it. And obviously we know this is really close to home because it was a, what they call a late miscarriage, which I hate, I hate that term, by the way, because I gave birth to my son, it wasn't miscarriage. But that's the terminology. They wanted to do a late miscarriage. Uh, will you play? It's part. And I sat Was there. They built it around. Did you think they, they thought of you first? They they did. And they came to me and said, look, if you say no, we won't play the story. We won't play it with anyone else. But we also know how much, they knew how much I did to try and um, raise awareness for baby loss. Because baby loss is something that people don't talk about ever. It's a taboo subject. No one wants to talk about a dead baby. No one wants to talk about it. It's it's uncomfortable and people don't know what to say. And I experienced it myself. Like my friends didn't know what to say to me. Yeah. Um, and I try and get people to talk about it and try and get that discussion going. And they know that I've always kind of been a big advocate. And they came to me and said, will you do this? And they'd go away and think about it. And I went away and spoke to my mom. And mom said, what are you feeling? I said, well, my gut instinct is to say yes, because I feel like we are only going to do good by doing this. And I feel like soaps are brilliant for that because what they do is they project really important subject matter into people's living rooms with and educate people without them actually knowing they're being educated. Yeah. Because they're talking about stuff, whether it's, you know, male suicide, whatever that is. And I felt like this was a really good opportunity. And I did it. And um, what I loved about it was I said, if you're going to do this, you're going to use me as a subject matter. Because I know that they talk to people and they go and have conversations with people that have lost babies. I said, I will talk to okay, them. So you were, you were the research angle? I was the research. And I said, I will speak to you about the death of my son. I will tell you everything about the death of my son. You have to play this as I want it. You can't you can't shy away from it. You have to be real. If we're going to do the story, we're going to do it in its entirety. We're going to tell the story. Yeah. And they did. And it was one of the most impactful, emotional things that... Mm. You know, and when it actually happened, I mean, it was difficult for me because I, and they got me counselling. They said, you know, what do you need? And I said, I don't know. I don't know what I need because I've spent years trying to get away from this. And I don't know what's in the box until I lift the lid. Yeah, so I, I don't know. You're literally, you know, and I, I'm, o- I'm opening the lid now and I'm going, this is what I'm doing. And I'm putting myself back in. So I had to give birth to the baby. I had to, and it was, it You're was. reliving. I relived. Yeah. Yes. When it, when it happened, did you did you kind of block it out and, and not shy away, but did you block it out and then this, this storyline was the first time you really went back into it or what? Like There was a long period of time after I lost my son that I, I didn't deal with it very well. You know, in the first, certainly for the first three or four months. Well, you said you, you trouble both of it. I, I, I kept myself away. I didn't want to talk to anyone. You know, even my own children, you know, it was Emily that actually pulled me out of myself because she just, kept, I was literally would lie on my bed and I didn't want to talk to anyone. And she came in, she came into me one day and this was, this was the turning point. She came into me one day, she put her arms, she lay on the bed next to me, she put her arms on me and she said, yeah, I really need to talk to you about something. And I was like, what am I doing? You know, this kid needs me. I'm still needed. I'm not, you know, and it, and it really just snapped me out of it it was it was one of those moments and actually talking about my experience is the one thing that pulled me through it and I feel like by doing the storyline in Coronation Street it got people talking and it's important to talk about it because it, it is the one thing that gets you through I think for me when I went in and did this story it was quite brief because it could have gone either way and I did oh uh, you know I didn't know what was going to happen and I had to give birth to the baby and I had to do the whole thing and actually in the scene where Michelle gives birth, um, there is a baby that they bring over, and I said, I don't want to see the jelly. They call it the jelly baby because it's like a. It, it feels like jelly, but it's like a prosthetic baby. And I said that was the right size, but same size. I said, I don't want to see it until the take. Don't show me that baby till the take because I wanted like a, a real reaction. So we did it with like a doll, like a tiny tears doll first, and then on the take it was one take, and when I remember when they turned that baby around, I just went. Like that was the one moment that I went. It, it just really, oh, this is this is really? like too real. And they'd put this little blue bob hat on. Just take you straight back. Which my son had a blue bob hat, on. and I literally just went. And we did the whole take, and they shouted cut, and I went take it away, take it away, take it away, take it away. And they, that was the one time, the only time that I, managed, I went back. Yeah. The rest of the time I was able to just go. 
separate myself. So that's such a testament though to how strong and like brave you are to, to even just go to that place again. You know, it's just, it's... But it's an important story to tell because right. there yeah, are millions of people yeah. that are going through this well, every um, day. It's, it's a powerful thing because you're using that, your platform to, to raise awareness and you're, you're going through the emotions, uh, reliving it again. But uh, you, you've also, you know, found the resources to, to look at counselling as you were as you were doing this, and I think that's so important for people that are going through struggles and, and mental health, and 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 it's such a huge thing right now. And like just Jeff, talking about it as the help. The best thing you can do is just not bottle anything up, no. and it's just talk to somebody about it, whether it uh, and whether it's not like a family member or your best friend. It it, it can be someone just outside of your Anyone. circle yeah. because you can just really just under they can just just. You can just offload. And the other thing is, those, those, the other thing that is, pay. is listen. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? If you're not the person going through it, just listen to someone. Yeah. I just, I would have loved someone to just listen, go, go on, Kim, tell me. Yeah. But people find it difficult because they often don't know what to say. And that can be in any situation. It can be whether you've got mental health or, or whether it's about baby loss or whatever it is. And people feel uncomfortable and they don't quite know what to say. Don't say anything. So you don't have to say anything. Just listen to me. Yeah.